Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to Crypto Trailblazers. On today's episode, I have the pleasure of talking with Hugo Finkelstein, who's the co-founder and CEO of Rise. And Rise are providing fiat and crypto payroll for global workforces. Hugo, it's great to have the opportunity to talk with you today about Rise and how you're helping organizations pay their global teams compliantly in any currency, whether that's fiat or crypto. Thank you, Sean. It's a pleasure being here. Cool. So on that basis, let's let's dive straight in. I think before we go into the questions to learn a bit more about Rise and, and what you're doing, I just wanted to set the scene and provide a bit of context of how the world of work is changing. Clearly, there's been an acceleration or movement, if you like, of more people are moving to freelancer and contractor roles. Obviously, after the pandemic as well, this accelerated the, the movement to sort of globalization and remote working. And even ourselves at Zero Hash, when the company was founded back in 2017, 100% of the people were based in the US. It's now 55% of people, and we have 45% that are dispersed across you know, pretty much every continent in the world right now. So from, from your perspective, Hugo, Rise started in 2019. Did yep. you see anything in this trend, or how did this sort of form the inception of the idea that eventually would become Rise? Yeah, I mean, I think... You know, um, and Rise, the product that we have today is actually our second version. Uh, the first version of our product was actually a talent marketplace, connecting businesses to independent talent uh, and facilitating connections and, and payments on chain. But, you know, so we started before the pandemic, uh, you know, so remote work has started. You know, it, it's not something that started as soon as the pandemic hit. It was propelled by the pandemic. But we could definitely see, you know, the tailwinds of the workforce wanting to become more and more independent. Uh, so, you know, people going from full time employment to uh, freelance work, basically, because they wanted to have the flexibility of locations of working, you know, work from home or work remotely, um, flexibility of working at their own hours, flexibility of having multiple clients, you know, really becoming more and more independent. So. You know, with that tailwind and then the pandemic happened, which propelled, you know, um, the need for people to work from home and the interest uh, from people to work from different places in the world. And therefore, the need for businesses to be able to hire and pay internationally in a compliant manner. So, um, you know, all of that combined um, kind of led to the um, production of the product that we have right now. Rise started as a marketplace, but we quickly evolved into an infrastructure play from a compliance and payment standpoint. We realized that managers, businesses, founders had more trouble not finding the talent, which was what we did in the first place, but more so paying, hiring, onboarding internationally in a compliant manner. So we thought, why don't we package the payment infrastructure that we've built? in stable coins in FIA, add a compliance layer to it, you know, so facilitate onboarding, KYC, providing professional services agreements, et cetera, and then sell that as an infrastructure to businesses of all kinds uh, that want to work with people around the world. Okay, no, it, it's, it's really interesting. And, and as you said, you, you described the tailwinds and those tailwinds sort of created a new global workforce landscape. And I think you, touched upon this a bit in terms of the challenges that organizations face today when paying um, globally distributed teams. But yeah. how, how are they managing this today? And, and what are some of the key challenges that they're experiencing from your perspective? Yeah, I mean, there's a couple of different ways. The first one, um, you know, you have teams that are, you know, located in one particular country that are trying to onboard international workers. Um, not only they have to manage, you know, and figure out how they're compliantly going to onboard those persons, um, and then how are they compliantly going to pay these workers in the currencies of their choice, basically. Uh, so if they go the fiat route, they will have to essentially gather all of the beneficiary information of the worker, make sure that they have, you know, each jurisdiction, each country have their own specific needs when it comes to beneficiary information. So you have to manage all of that. You have to make sure that your current fiat provider can help you do international wires or, you know, send money, you know, in a cross-border manner. Uh, so all these, this entire sets of, 
of questions that arise uh, and needs that arise when you're trying to pay people internationally. Then you have um, teams that have treasury in fiat only, that have workers that need to get paid, in, that want to get paid in stable coins, and we're seeing more and more demand for it. Um, so these managers have to figure out how to get from fiat to a stable coin and then how to send out those stable coins in a uh, automated, automated manner and scalable manner. So that's another set of issues and problems that arise. I appreciate yeah. if you're going to be introducing what, hybrid, pay, hybrid payroll, which we'll come on to shortly as well. Obviously, there's yeah. complexities involved. And you know, in terms of what you're doing at Rise, you're abstracting those complexities and before we dig into that in a bit more detail, um, I just wanted to explore sort of momentarily what's the demand for crypto and stablecoin payroll payments. Um, we personally yeah. recently conducted a study with two and a half thousand freelancers across the US, Argentina, Mexico, Brazil, and the UAE. And one stat that really stood out for me, and I'd love to get your thoughts on this, was 93% of freelancers would like to be paid or receive a portion of their income in crypto, whether that's um, Bitcoin, Ethereum, or more stable coin driven like USDC. So what sort of demand are you seeing, or you and the team at Rise seeing? I know you recently crossed a pretty impressive milestone with $100 million in total payroll volume. What sort of is the blend, if you like, of crypto and stable coin and fiat payouts? Yeah. Um, and, you know, and we're definitely seeing more interest for stablecoin uh, than crypto. Uh, and as a matter of fact, on the system today, we only pay contractors that when they choose, you know, blockchain rails, we only pay in stablecoins. We don't pay in, uh, in cryptocurrencies such as Ether or Bitcoin. But, uh, I mean, demand has been growing for sure. Uh, we satisfy the needs of Web3 native companies as well as Web2. Uh, more traditional businesses, the demand has come from that component, um, quite interestingly, uh, over the past few months. So, you know, traditional businesses that have international workers located in unstable markets that are asking access to USD. Uh, and today, the easiest, cheapest, most efficient way to get access to USD is via, in you know, globally, cross-border, is via stable coins. Uh, so definitely demand from that. We've actually had customers able to retain talent because of that feature that we offer. So definitely seeing a lot of uptick, you know, an uptick on that front. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we, we see it also from the Web3 side of things. Uh, companies that have, you know, treasury and stables just trying to automate the entire process uh, and scale their payments process to uh, international team members and stables. So. Definitely, uh, definitely meant from that part. Yeah. Again, I think that is, it's a really interesting point, and it demonstrates that there's definitely demand exists. That there's a problem that people are trying to solve as well. As you said, I think you identified a few there: retaining talent, paying employees in different jurisdictions. Um, when you think about what are the the benefits of introducing a, a hybrid payroll solution for organisations? I was reading your report recently, your 2024 work, workforce trend report, which for the audience, if you get the chance, it's, it's really fascinating. You should, you should go and download a copy. You talk about how Web3 is redefining the employer-employee dynamic. Can you share with the audience some of the, the things and benefits from both an employer and employee perspective what, in, in regards to this new Web3 world of payroll? Yeah, I mean, you know, from an employer standpoint, and, and just to add to your the statistics of, you know, 93% of freelancers wanting to be, you know, paid or partially paid in, in crypto or stable coins, the same applies to younger generations that are entering the workforce. So Gen Z's, millennials, you know, are also asking to more and more to be paid partially or fully in, um, in stable coins and crypto. So, you know, to me um, and to us, and we're seeing it firsthand with our customers, the benefit of adopting a hybrid payroll solution. So that is essentially a payroll solution that will blend fiat, stables, and crypto. The main benefit is that you're able, you're able to, you know, provide the most flexible, you know, payout system. But, you know, as a result, you're able to attract and retain the best talent on earth uh, or, you know, talent that is becoming more and more demanding uh, with its uh, employers and, and customers. 
So you're able to attract talent that wants to be paid partially in crypto, partially in fiat, you know, and provide those things. So it goes beyond just providing a paycheck. It provides, you know, the most amount of flexibility and giving access to these workers to an advanced financial ecosystem. Um, so these are the benefits, you know, and on top of, you know, the typical faster, cheaper, you know, more secure rails, um, you know, there are other other benefits that uh, we're, we're providing by having that uh, infrastructure. From an employee standpoint, from a payee standpoint, the benefits are the same. You can, you know, choose, you can have more freedom to choose and be more flexible when it comes to your paycheck. Uh, so you can choose to have 50% going to your, you know, bank account, 40% going to one of your wallets. Uh, and then the next 10%, you can also keep that on chain and start, you know, uh, using that as an investment option or like, you know, putting that into accounts or like lending protocols, et cetera. Um, there's, it gives you access to an entirely new world as an individual. Um, also helps unbanks, uh, you know, unbanked contractors, unbanked workers getting paid. Uh, so it, in many different ways, it, it helps, you know, employers and employees and, and the dynamics between the two. Yeah, I, I think, on that point as well, you're right. You know, when you think about the economy, we talk about that we, op we, we operate or we live in a global economy right now. But I think to your point, payments or payroll, they're not really synonymous with operating a, on a global economy basis. And those three pillars that you identified, you know, the ability to bridge fiat, crypto and stables in one platform or in one engine, if you like. That's what we believe at Zero Hash as well, the future will be about in terms of how do you move payments and how do you move or transfer value through those different uh, vehicles or instruments. So we've explored the, how, the, how the global workforce environment has changed, the, the demand and appetite for stablecoin payouts and, and the benefits both from an employer and employee perspective. I always think it's great to really focus on utility and real world use cases um, and looking at companies that are actually embracing these new technologies. Can yeah. you share or provide any information around a customer story which demonstrates the need for hybrid payroll and what benefits has this customer been able to realize by partnering with Rise? Yeah. Yeah, and I have two, you know, very uh, different and uh, I think very practical use cases. The first one was a Web2, so a traditional company, an agency actually that had, you know, international workers on its payroll um, coming to us saying, hey, we are about to lose some of our talent because we're not able to pay them uh, in stable coins uh, in the markets that they're located in. We only have treasury in fiat. We don't know how to process this, uh, you know, conversion and then send out of stables. Uh, and we were able to just do that, you know, in a matter of days, the company was onboarded, um, the contractors were onboarded, and then uh, the contractors were able to get paid and get access to stable coins. And that company was able to retain that talent. Um, the other use case that we saw, I mean, a story that we saw that was, uh, you know, pretty, uh, you know, exciting to see was this Web3, you know, native company which had treasury in stable coins, having to pay its workers in fiat in some particular countries. Um, and they didn't know how to do that. They would go through an exchange, move that to a bank and then send from the bank. So, you know, a plethora of fees uh, in processing times in, in the, uh, you know, in the interim. And we were able to have them fund their payroll in stable coins and then pay out in uh, the contractor's local currencies in uh, real time. Uh, at the best foreign exchange rates. Uh, so now that company is still, you know, with us, uh, actually grew their team uh, and are pretty pleased with our service. So, you know, the ability to blend in all these kinds of currencies, move at the speed, you know, that you require to when it comes to, you know, people payments, um, I think it's quite, uh, it's quite exciting. Yeah, I agree. There's some really powerful use cases and stories that you shared there. And it actually triggered my mind when you think about if you buy something online from an e-commerce perspective, you know, you yeah. have a plethora of alternative payment methods, cards, bank transfers, local payment methods. But you're right. I guess actually now thinking about it in terms of payroll 
hasn't really modernized or kept up and given people the freedom, the flexibility and the choice in, in terms of how you've just described. So I think that, that's really interesting. And I just wanted to, to finish on, clearly you know, we're seeing this at Zero Hash as well, the, the demand for stablecoin payouts or holding USDC as a store of value in certain developing markets. There's real strong demand there in Latin America, for example. Do you mm -hmm. think eventually all markets and companies will move to this hybrid payroll model? And what, what in your opinion, needs to happen for us to get there? I think it's um, a lot of education, um, a lot, a lot of education on the user side of things, you know, uh, and that, you know, it goes through having, you know, well improved. And I think we're on our way. Well improved, you know, user experience, helping non crypto friendly users interact with smart contracts, interact with, you know, um, transactions on chains, etc., without even realizing it. And that's part of the work that we're doing here at Rise. Um, more clarity around, you know, regulations operating as a crypto business or even working with crypto payment solutions. Um, and again, I think there's on across different regions, some of them are, are, you know, quicker than others at establishing frameworks, but we're all going in the right direction. Um, but eventually, yeah, I think uh, it's pretty clear to us for many different, you know, tailwinds that, enabling a hybrid solution when it comes to payroll, which is a critical, you know, operation as, as, you know, as part of a business, um, the need for hybrid will become more and more important, you know, whether it is because you want to attract and retain talent that's all around the world in unstable markets, or you want to attract younger talent that is, you know, open to crypto, uh, and open to stable coins and want to have access to this, you know, to the decentralized uh, finance ecosystem you'll want to have those processes in place, you know, and we're actually seeing it firsthand with traditional businesses, uh, large businesses that are now tipping their toes into it and starting to get more and more interesting, uh, interested in the, uh, in these services. So, uh, I think the future is bright. Um, and I think that, um, yeah, there's, there's going to be a growing demand for, uh, those, uh, those solutions. Yeah, I agree completely, Hugo. And as you said, I think the sentiment in the market right now as well is stable coins are, are, are a hot topic. And I've been reading some material about stable coins have found their, or they are the killer use case for crypto in terms of payments. But what I particularly enjoyed about this discussion is I think that there's actually even more of a killer use case for payroll, or you could certainly argue that as well, just based on the examples that you shared with me today. So yeah, I wanted to take the opportunity to personally thank you for talking with us today sharing your Thank story you. at Rise. If the audience wants to learn more about Rise and, and adopting a hybrid payroll strategy, how can they get in touch with you? Yeah, riseworks.io um, is our website. There are multiple ways for to, you know, to get in touch with us. Our team is available on X, on LinkedIn, on Telegram. Um, you know, we go to conferences, uh, and our doors are wide open for collaboration and partnerships, uh, and education on the space. So, uh, yeah, riseworks.io is the, the website to go to. Perfect. Thank you very much, Hugo. It's a pleasure. Thank, thank you, Sean.